Hello Travelers! I am Lorkeen, your Traveler's Guide to Tyria. In the last episode we visited the prosperous Claypool, the Heartwoods and Finny Ridge. Today we will try to see what we can learn about the mysterious dark portals that we saw in Great Heartwald. We start by paying a visit to the Elben Monastery and see what they know about these events. Elben Monastery Named after its founder, is a large walled keep and monastery dedicated to Cormir, the goddess of order, spirit, and truth. This priesthood is relatively new compared to the other faith of the six, as it was founded after Spear Marshal Cormir ascended to godhood in 1075 AE, after defeating Abaddon during the events of Nightfall and Guild Wars 1. The monastery is also Queensdale's oldest brewery, where they make the best beer around. What's the connection between priesthood and making beer? According to Brother Jelen, they are equally challenging. And what's the secret to the beer made here you are asking? Here's a hint. Apple peels. Couple of handfuls in the keg give a light fruity tone. Now ask no more. I wasn't asking. Good, good. Because my lips are airtight. Sister Liz is one of the brewmasters and you can help her by tasting some of the new batches. Master Brewer Desh can sell you quite a few ales, most of them connected to the Brewmaster Achievement or Elbin Monastery Brew of the Month Club, in which you can enroll here and then you will receive a monthly ale from their collection. You will need to enter a big city to receive the parcel. Brother Vince attends the vineyard and winemaking and he is a heart vendor of the place. He also provides ale when you finish helping him. Monk Spearstein needed for the Brewmaster collection. I fear for my life every time I leave the monastery. Why is that? Centaurs. Such godless creatures. They have no moral compass whatsoever. The Centaurs are a problem like everywhere else, trying to steal kegs of ale. We will kill for this ale! Will you die for oh, it? We have one. Eating. Let us hope it is better than the swill the Harathi brew up in cold beer. If you get involved in this, make sure to return the kegs to Brother Abbot Matthias, the head of the monastery, not to Sister Liz, as she will accept them, but they will not count for the event progression. I wonder if the centaurs would be less hostile if we shared our beer with them. I think they want our land and crops, not our beer. Just a thought. More for me, then. Right after sunset, the same kind of portals that we have seen in Heartwoods appear in the courtyard of the monastery. It seems like these mysterious portals caught the attention of the Durmond Priory, which sent some members to investigate. Historian Moritz, a big fan of history has this theory that when the Temple of Ages was destroyed, the boundary between this realm and the mist became weaker. As a result, Creatures from the underworld have been able to pass into the swamp. Sophie is not convinced, but she enjoys the fine ale regardless. <clears throat> Balthazar blessed this brew with a full body. Duena blessed those brave souls who guard this brew and keep it from falling into unworthy hands. Cormir blessed those who imbibe it with sweet satisfaction. Lissa bring them a full measure of mirth thereafter. Melandru see this brew safely to its destination, and Grenth ward away foul fermentation. That was beautiful. Just beautiful. Safe journey, sister. Oh, and Brenda. Yes, most holy. Keep your lips off the barrel this time. Ale, ale, ale. Ale makes me happy. Ale makes me sing. Ale makes me love everything. If you want to check out the swamp and the ruins of the Temple of the Ages, on the way you can help Sister Brenda protect a brew shipment that she is taking south to the Samplas Heaven, a Lion Guard outpost. The shipment has to cross the Godslaw's Swamp and this is where things get complicated because the swamp is the place where the mystical ruins of the Temple of the Ages are, where it is said that time itself originated from. The area was formerly part of the Black Curtain. 
The partially submerged ruins was a sacred location in Crida where the six human gods were worshipped. According to Brother Theophilus, who lived here during Salma's time, this temple is as old as Crida itself. Even before the tribes were united into a single kingdom, it was known to all that these swamps were sacred, a final resting place for the dead. Grinth was the first god to have a statue here, but the others were erected soon after. Before the coming of the White Mantle, many Crichtons would make a pilgrimage here to the Temple of the Ages when they reached adulthood. By presenting themselves to the gods, they hoped to find their true calling. By kneeling at the statue Balthazar, heroes could summon his champion and gain access to the realm of the God of War, the Fisher of Woe. In the same way, the voice of Grinth, gave passage to the Grinth's realm, Underworld. The Goddess of Truth is a statue of Cormier erected by the Order of Whispers after she ascended. It was placed in Chantry of Secrets in Vabi, and kneeling at that statue summoned the Seer of Truth, the Goddess Avatar, which in turn granted access to the Domain of Anguish. The statue itself depicts a blind folded Cormier with a book close to her chest, while holding and standing on the Mask of Abaddon with her other hand. It looks like a similar statue was brought to the Temple of Ages between the events of Guild Wars 1 and 2. Or maybe it is the same statue, brought here after a redecoration of the Chantry of Secrets? The temple was destroyed when it rose in 1219 AE and the resulting tidal wave sank it. The ruined remains of the statues dedicated to each of the gods remain on the site and still glow with power. You can find them underwater, at the hero point. You might have to kill a veteran marsh drake that lurks there, but this is where you can obtain memory of the ages, if you need to create energy of the mist to craft the legendary axe Astralaria. The constant traveling between Tyria and the Underworld, along with the destruction of the Temple of the Ages, caused the barrier between the two realms to weaken even further, allowing God's Lost Swamp, as well as other areas such as Blackroot Cut and Kessex Hills, to be overrun with portals to the Underworld. Tortured spirits driven to madness by spectral forces, and other worse things have been emerging from them. The Temple has both a mystical and a historical importance. Queen Selma was raised here by her mother, Berea, who was a priestess at this temple. For a while, they had a special dispensation from the royal treasury, given by King Jaden, Selma's father, as he did take good care of his children, legitimate or not. But after the Char invasion, it is thought that the king abandoned them and all of the people of Crita in their hour of need. The Mesmer Collective might know more about this story. If you are interested, all you need to do is find and help someone in need. After the king's disappearance, the Lion Guard were trying to start a royalist faction and wrest control of Crita from the hands of the White Mantle. So they did their homework and found Soma, who was seen as having both ties to the true gods as well as royal blood, making her the perfect candidate. She set aside her holy duties as a priestess and answered the call of destiny, hoping to restore justice and peace to her people. In 1079 AE, the Crichton Civil War started as she declared war on the White Mantle and with the aid of the Shining Blade and Lion's Guard, Salma retook the throne in Lion's Arch. Considering all of this, it is easy to understand why this place gets the attention of so many historians and priests alike, and you can help historian Garrett investigate the swamp. Because of its connection to the underworld, this place is visited by many necromancers. Deathroot Shack is the home of a Norm necromancer who traveled to this place to study a magical book, but he feels a horrible coldness when he reaches for it. This evil tome is lying on the table outside. It is cold to the touch and the pages are stained, but the text is still legible. Reading it spawns a veteran flesh reaver out of an underworld portal. A similar book was found by scholar Taryn, member of the Dermond Priory. She translated it and now she is considering performing the necromancer ritual described. You can encourage her if you are prepared to face the results. This'll lead straight into the underworld. If it works right. And if it doesn't? I suppose we'll discover that later. Indeed. We discovered what would happen. Yes, yes we did. Think we should do it again sometime? Oh, probably not. That never stops us, though. When it comes to science, err on the side of curiosity. 
Guardian Cat is Taryn's sister and the person most excited to be here as she seems to be a fan of books about evil places. Scholar Depp is studying the swamp also, although she is not very happy about it. And it's not the ghosts that make her uncomfortable, but something else, something she feels lurking in the shadows. And she is right, all around tortured spirits are tormented by shades from the underworld. If they succumb, they become wrathful spirits. Or you can help them find peace. At night, right next to the swamp, towards Tam and Foothills we find the same portals we have seen in Hardwoods in the monastery. Destroying them in all three areas will open new portals that can teleport you right back to the heart of the swamp, where, surprise surprise, we find even more portals. 12 to be precise. If you are brave enough to fight the hordes of underworld creatures and destroy these portals too, then you are brave enough to fight one of the world bosses that will spawn here when you finish this event. Shadow Behemoth is a gargantuan nightmare creature that exits the underworld every two hours. Be careful when fighting him. When reaching 75, 50 and 25% health he will spawn 5, 9 and 13 portals. If you take them down in less than 20 seconds, you will get the Dispelling Shadows achievement. Shadow Behemoth puts up a pretty impressive fight, but defeating him would give you quite a few achievements, plus some items for crafting the legendary weapons Nevermore, Twilight, Sunrise, Howler, The Flame Seeker Prophecies, and Hope. Once per day you receive a demonic chest with a rare chance for some really nice weapons. And lately dead bodies of priests of Grinth have been found here and at Reaper's Gate in Lorner's Pass. At first they seem to have died of stab wounds, but as a necromancer you can feel the traces of the underworld left by undead skeletons. Even more curious, after the shadow behemoth's death a mysterious spirit will float towards the dead body in the swamp. Raiding the Hall of Chains will reveal more about these mysterious deaths. And this is the end of our trip for today. Write in the comments about anything you want to add to the list of fun things to do in the area and if you enjoyed our trip, please like, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you will be ready to join me in the next adventure when we will visit a heaven and make friends with Edens and hopefully we will overcome any fear of heights that we might have. Happy exploring!